all of that to say this because we know that truths are parallel. And there are a lot of times that we hear words or messages that are contaminated. They're not ready to be ingested. They're not fully cooked, amen? They got a little piece of it, you know? They haven't sought God for the full measure. And then they decided to serve it to the people of God. And just as trusting Christians, we ingest that word, which causes a contamination to the body. That's why you see people scattered, amen, that people that go to the same church that don't speak to each other, amen, people that are suffering with demonic, you know, possessions because of food poisonings. And they cause that. Food, natural food poisoning causes abdominal pains. It causes you to vomit. It causes diarrhea. It causes all sorts, and then it attacks the nervous system. The things that are supposed to function as they do don't function. You, you know, even as much as your fine motor skills, your weak, you can't focus on how the way you need to focus. So in that manner, in the body of Christ, when we are contaminated by a word that's put out prematurely, that's what happens to us. We fall up under pressure. We have to stand against the wiles of the enemy or take on the things of this life. We fall. We fail at some point because we have come up short. The word that we contaminate, the body has to eat. Amen? But what it eats and how it's prepared makes a great difference. Amen. You can't just eat anything. Amen. It has to be prepared properly. Yes. Because you will suffer great harm. There is recovery, though. Thank you, Jesus. After that, even though God still recovers us. Amen? Amen. And you think about when you go to a restaurant that serves bad food. And a lot of people complain and file lawsuits and file complaints. Usually the food, the health department comes out there and it does an inspection. And if you fail the inspection, your building is shut down. You're, you're no longer in operation. Amen. And just as in the houses of God, there are many preachers that speak words that contaminate the people of God. The people of God are detoured in their thinking and the way that they serve God. They feel that they can do whatever they want to do and still be pleasing unto God. And they have been poisoned because their minds have been warped by what the people that they trust have said. The, word, the Bible tells us that we should add nothing to his word nor take it away. And if you do that, you have to, if you in, if you consume any food by the, and the word of God that has been mixed with man's opinion, man's intellect, or it's taken away, you know, they'll say that, you know, God loves you, but they won't tell you that you need to come out of your mess. Amen. You have been food poisoned because you know what? It's not providing the full nourishment that it was intended to do. Meats don't have to, we can cook meat. And we don't have the seasoning. And guess what? It's still, that meat still provides the nutrients that we need. But we season it for taste so that it's pleasurable to us. Amen. But as God will tell the prophets in the olden days that they would have to eat the whole roll. Amen. And it was bitter to them. It didn't taste good going down. But it's good for their belly. Amen. It still provided nourishment. It didn't taste desirable to a lot of people. You know, some of us have selective taste. There are things that we some may can eat and you may cannot be, or some things that you're just not ready to eat. There is a call a required taste. Everybody can't eat seafood. You know, everybody can't eat filet mignon. It's just it's just too much, you know, for them. They're not ready. That's another uh, you know, another level in that it's just with the word of God, everybody can't handle certain things, you know. Everybody not ready for it. Amen. But I ask that you go with me to the word of God, to Proverbs 16 and 23. Amen. I just thank God on tonight, and I give God glory on and praise because it's been a while. Praise the Lord. But I, I thank God I'm here. I made it. Praise the Lord. Amen. After the storm, I made it. I left. I'm here. Amen. And I just thank God for that because he saw me through. Through it all, amen. Even when I didn't know how I was going to make it myself, I made it. 
Amen. I made it. I'm here. Amen. That's my testimony. I made it in the midst of it all. I'm here. I'm still smiling. Amen. Amen. I got a love child. And praise the Lord. And I'm here. God is blessing me every day and giving me the strength that I need to be a mother. This is a new journey for me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Proverbs 16 and 23 says, The heart of the wise teaches his teaches his mouth and added learning to his lips. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ears thereof are the ways of death. Amen. When you are seasoned in the word of God, when you are mature in the things of God, you know when, how to do and what to do when you're preparing the word to the people of God. You take survey and inventory of your audience, of your listeners, and you tune in with the spirit of God because you need to know how to administer the word of God to his people. So because there are different levels of listeners, amen? Some are mature. Some are babes in Christ. Some fall right in between. But however, when you're a, a minister of the gospel, you know how to serve the food, amen? Some people, you don't have to cut up their steak for them. Some people you do. Some people got to be cooked really well done. It got to be real tender because all of our teeth are not there, amen? So it got to be easy for us to chew and to digest. Just as children, you break down their food. You take it and you cut it up so that they can take it in. Just as that is done in the natural, so in the spirit. When you are a minister of the word of God, you know how to break the word down so that even the smallest child is able to receive what you're saying. What good is it for me to speak into a microphone and hum and, you know, shout and run across the pulpit and nobody has gotten an understanding? That's right. That's right. Amen. That, that doesn't make any sense. Amen. That's right. But that's what a lot of people are used to. Amen. They're used to the preacher sweating and, and, and jumping across chairs and singing a few songs and hitting a few notes and prophesying to people in between his messages. But when you left and you ask yourself, what did I get from that? Yeah. And sometimes you go to a restaurant and you say, I spent $30, but I'm not even full. Come on, Dad. Come on, Come on you, you don't work hard for your $30. The children that aggravated you, you know, you know, made you tired. You know, slave them probably went in when you didn't feel like it. And you go to a restaurant, you give people your thirty dollars, and you leave out of there hungry. Come on now. And you say, what? What did I come here for? I that food wasn't. It, it, didn't, it didn't suffice me. You know, it, it wasn't good enough. And that's how you are in some houses. Yeah. And the people of God, you go there and you say, Have I been to church? You know, I don't feel like I've been to church. Because the food, it has to have some type of sustenance. Right. It can't be just, it can't just be um, soupy. It can't be just be liquid. It need to be um, able to sustain you. It got to be filling. You know, you need to have a couple of your fruit, food groups on that plate. You got to have some grains and your vegetables and your meats and your protein and all of that in order to sustain you because that food got to take you for another four hours. Praise the Lord. And you got to know where you're eating from. Mm -hmm. Because everybody that cook and say they're cook, it's not certified. <laughs> <laughs> Some people get in the kitchen and you think they know what they're doing, but they don't know what they're doing. And guess what? You suffer the consequences of that. Just as some preachers, because they got a title on their name, because they went through a theologian school and they got doctors and all these accolades, behind their names, you feel like, okay, they got some good teaching, you know, they know the word, but they don't have any etiquette, amen, they don't know how to run two scriptures together, amen, they don't know how to minister to you where you are, thank you, they can't discern where you are in the spirit, they just preach to you, they beating you down, and you don't have a hard day, you feel it so low, and they just come and just beat you all the way, beat you all the way into that coma. You might have had a little life, and they take that up out of you. Because some messages do that to you. Yes. They take all your script yes. and sit through the whole message. Oh, yes. Yes. 
There are some food. You know how some children, they start eating and they say, uh-uh, I don't want that.